Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to the Madness to Miracles radio show, a show brought to you by Odyssey House Incorporated. This show covers addiction and recovery with the primary focus being on the recovery process. I'm your host, my name is Anisha Freeman. I'm also known as The Locksmith because I make keys for people who are locked up in their minds. I'm also a person in long-term recovery. And what that means is that I have not used any drugs or alcohol in over 18 years. I'm also a therapist and I work at the Flint and Saginaw locations of Odyssey House. I'm also the clinical director of Saginaw Odyssey House. For those who may not be familiar with Odyssey House, it's an organization that provides inpatient and outpatient treatment services for people who struggle with substance use disorders. We also work with people who are co-occurring who have both substance use disorders and mental health disorders. Um, our, this radio show airs every week on Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. and 10.30 p.m. on WFOV 92.1. LPFM Flint, Our Voices Radio, determined to make a difference. For those who may not be familiar with Odyssey House, we have several locations. So we have inpatient treatment available in Flint and in Saginaw. Our Saginaw inpatient residential treatment is only for women. So it's for women. It can, we can take in women who don't have children. We can take in women with children. They could actually bring their children with them. We can take in expecting mothers, mothers that are pregnant. And we also work with women who are in the process of trying to be reunited with their children. Our Flint location is co-ed. So we take in men and women and children. We can actually take in a whole, the whole family if the whole family needs services. We have outpatient treatment available in Flint, and we have recovery houses in Flint, Port Huron, and Saginaw. So if you need more information or if you know someone who needs help, they're struggling with addiction, or if you need help yourself, feel free to call our number. We have a 24-hour crisis line that you can call any time of the day or night. That number is 810-238-04. 83. Again, that's 810-238-0483. The Madness to Miracles radio show is named after an event that Odyssey House uh, sponsors every year in September in celebration of National Recovery Month. Last year, the event was held September the 12th at, um, in Saginaw, and it was awesome. We had a phenomenal time. I actually was there. This is the first time that I was attended one of these events. So we heard stories of recovery. We gave out awards to recognize and celebrate people's accomplishments in recovery. We had a phenomenal, awesome keynote speaker. We had live entertainment. We had food, fun, and fellowship. So stay tuned for more information we will be announcing the date and the location for the madness to miracles event that will happen this coming september in september of 2019 so we will have more information this radio show alternates every week between a recovery related topic and a guest speaker. I haven't had a guest speaker in the last few weeks due to the holidays and people's schedule and people being on vacation, but I will soon have a guest speaker. Today, we're gonna focus on a topic. I'm gonna talk about the role of the levels in a therapeutic community model in preventing relapse. So. Odyssey House operates under what they call the TC model. It's a therapeutic community. And what that means is that it's uh, we have traditional treatment. We have traditional groups like relapse prevention, and uh, we have DBT and seeking safety and women's group and men's group and parenting groups. We have traditional treatment, but we also have the TC model also operates where peers actually help each other recover. Um, one of the things that we say in the TC model is that we are best seen in the eyes of our peers. One of my mentors said, it's hard to see the picture when you're the frame 
<laughs> I've heard other people say it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. So a lot of times we need other people to tell us what they see because we've been using defense mechanisms and, and, and sometimes we've been around people who operate out of the same dysfunctional behaviors we operate out of, so they've normalized them. We don't really even think we're doing anything wrong. And so we need other people to bring our awareness up on our behaviors and what those behaviors have to do with active addiction and how we must change those behavior in order to enjoy long-term recovery. And so I want to talk about the levels because there's levels uh, at, in the TC model. You know, when a person first come in, they are considered a candidate in. They're a boarder the first three days, then they're a candidate in, where they call it the pressure cooker, where a person is actually learning about the TC model, seeing if, if it's a good fit. Is, is, is this a good fit for me? Because, see, Odyssey House is our residential is more of a long-term uh, treatment center. We have people who stay stay there different lengths of time, but it is really a long-term residential center. And some people need long-term. They have chronic histories of substance use disorders. That was my story. I went in and out of drug treatment centers, mental hospitals, and jail for over 20 for over 20 years. Um, I started when I was 16, when I first went in uh, to a mental hospital, and I got clean when I was 36. It was about 20, 20 years or slightly over 20 years. And so when the last time I went into treatment, they had sent me to a place for 14 days, and when after the 14 days were, was up, I was thinking they were getting ready to transfer me. I consider that detox. I, I was like, I, you guys are <laughs> going to transfer me somewhere. They was like, no, you're going home. I'm like, no, I'm not. And I told them, I'm like, no, I'm serious this time. No, I'm really serious. I really want to get my life together this time. I'm not playing, and I am not ready to go home. I've been going in and out of these places for 20 years. I need some help some real intensive long-term help. And so I went to a longer uh, term rehab, rehab, rehab center, and then I went to a recovery house and I stayed there two years. And now I have over 18 years clean and I have I accomplished a lot of things. I've turned my life around and now I'm able to give back to the community. I am actually an asset to the community as opposed to a liability. But if I had kept going in and out, in and out, in and out of short term treatment, that may work for some people. There are some people that can go to a short term treatment center, get their life together, get on track, stay on track and just turn their life completely around. That's not everybody's story. There are some of us who have chronic issues. That's why there's a difference between acute care and chronic. There are some people who cannot stay clean. They cannot, they do, they do not get the help they need in an acute care model. They need a chronic care model because they have a chronic problem. And for some people, it can be traced back three or four generations. So they need some long-term help. And that's what I like about Odyssey House. So they have these levels. So they have level one, level two, level three, and level four. Each level um, has a focus or a primary goal. So what the TC model does is it actually simulates life on life term stressors, the same type of stressors that you're going to face out in society, but it's in a protective environment. So you can work through your core issues that, that keep you from being a productive member of society. Those issues that are making you a liability to society instead of an asset. Because I, um, I have two master's degrees and one of my master's degrees uh, is in social work. And so I have studied over the years, we studied about how much uh, addiction actually costs society. We talk about the, the cost to the criminal justice field, the cost of addiction, uh, people going in and out of emergency rooms. We are, with people in active addiction, we are, are hurting a, a, a society on a whole nother level. So it is really important that when we're in treatment, that we're working on those core issues that keep us being a problem. We need, we y'all need us. We need to be paying taxes. We need to be productive. We need to be contributing to the gross domestic product of America. <laughs> and so in order to do that, then we need to get ourselves together. And I am so glad that, that I came across uh, 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 some help that was long-term. 
that that they didn't you know try to do a band-aid approach because they assessed me and they were like yeah you have a chronic history you have been doing this for 20 years going in and out of these places you've been tearing up your life you've been tearing up your children's lives you have been tearing up everything that you come in contact with You've been going in and out of these emergency rooms. You are, you're running up bills and we can't pay for them. One of the things, and I'm making this point because it's very important that you understand about the cost ratio. Like I said, I have an MB, I have an MSW, but I have an MBA. So we study the MBA. The primary focus of an MBA is to learn how to quantify things. So you learn how to quantify decisions. And it is not a good business decision to work with somebody for a few weeks who needs chronic care because they're going to keep coming in and out and in and out and in and out and when they're out they're tearing up society and and you're paying for it yep you're paying for it you know when I took an advanced policy class for my MSW we studied the medical industry and we watched a, a documentary called Solomon's uh, dilemma. I think it was Dr. Solomon's dilemma or something like that. It was about a doctor and he was talking about the dilemma that he faces with trying to uh, uh, take care of people in the hospital who didn't have any insurance but who needed a lot of care or they were going to die but they didn't have any insurance and then you have people who have insurance that need care and then the hospital's losing money and so he was at a dilemma and I know that some of his dilemma came Came from people with addictions who keep ODing and having all these other problems who keep hitting emergency room who don't have insurance and that's running up the bill and causing all kind of problem and and that documentary also shows some unethical things that were being done in the medical industry trying to solve the dilemma and I'm not going to go into that that's beyond the scope of this radio show all I'm going to say is at while I was sitting there I was thinking like we're going to have to do better as a society there has to be a solution okay and one of the solutions is to address chronic care problems with chronic models and that's what I like about the TC model it's a chronic care model okay and so the level the first level level one is where people learn to be responsible for their attitude actions and behaviors and so they have to learn that you are responsible for how you act you can't keep blaming other people because you're dysfunctional you can't be claim be saying somebody made you feel a certain way no your belief system your thought process the way you're perceiving what happened is determining how you're feeling and then how you feel is determining your behaviors that's CBT okay that's cognitive behavioral therapy it's a thought, feeling, behavior, consequence. So at level one, they really get to an understanding of that. Because if they don't, it's going to be hard to stay clean. If you're not being held accountable for what you're doing and you're blaming other people, then you're going to be feeling miserable because you feel powerless. If, I, if you could actually uh, keep going through life thinking that other people are controlling your attitudes, your actions, and your behaviors, you feel powerless. You feel like you're at the mercy of other people's decisions and their decisions is going to control how you feel and how you behave. And so people, it's going to be hard to stay clean feeling like that. You're going to be on the edge, wondering what other people are going to do today that's going to make me act a certain way. And so once level one is designed to help you learn how to be responsible for your attitudes, your actions, and your behaviors. And so you're learning really to be responsible uh, uh, internally. So you don't have to go around using drugs and alcohol to make you feel better uh, or for short increments of time. Then level two is where people learn how to be responsible for things. Because, you know, it, it, I know in my active addiction, I, wasn't resp I was responsible for my paraphernalia. I was a very responsible person as it relates to keeping up with my paraphernalia. And those are the gadgets and gadgets that I use to ingest drugs. And so I was very responsible. But as it relates to any other thing, any other thing, I was not responsible. I couldn't even be trusted to keep up with my ID or birth certificates. I had to have them way across town somewhere at, at other, par uh, other people's house. And then if I needed something, like if I needed my ID or I needed something, I would be upset because the person who was holding my things, who was being responsible for me, wasn't home. How dare you not be home so I can come and get my stuff that I'm not responsible enough to keep myself. And so, like, like people are, are people with active addiction, like, we lose a lot of basic life skills. Some of us never had them. 
Okay, some people never had them. They were raised in a dysfunctional environment where they were not taught life on life, you know, how to live and navigate life on life terms. So they don't have any skills to, to, that they lost. They never had, had them in the first place. But some of us were raised in an environment where we had skill sets on how to live life on life terms, but we lost them during the, addic the, act, during the act of addiction. And so you have to learn how to be responsible. And see, you're not just going to groups. You go to groups. Oh, you go to the relapse prevention groups. Those are important. You go to anger management groups. Those are very important. You go to parenting groups. All of that is very important. But you also have a department as a, a resident where you're responsible for things. Like you get to uh, do a tour where you are in the kitchen for a period of time. But when you get out of treatment and you live in your own house, you're going to have a kitchen in there. Hopefully you're going to have a kitchen in your house or in your apartment. And you're going to have to, you're going to have to buy groceries. You're going to have to keep up with the inventory. You're going to have to be able to look in the cabinet and say, we're running out of flour. We're running out of key ingredients. I must write this down and go to the store. And that may, some people who may not understand addiction, you may be thinking, well, Nisha, that's real. That's everyday stuff. No, not for people who've been in active addiction for a long period of time. Mm-mm. I wasn't going grocery shopping. I wasn't keeping up with inventory. I was keeping up on where is my my drugs at, uh, how much I'm going to smoke today, how much I'm going to drink today. That was the only thing I was keeping up with, okay? And so the keeping up with the, the, the police schedule for the officer who was mean, what shift he worked, what shift, that was all I was keeping up with. I was not keeping, I was not being responsible. So you learn to be responsible for things because when you get out into society, you're going to have to be responsible. You have to keep up with your own ID. You're going to have to keep up with your own bills. You're going to have to do inventory in your own house. You're going to have to know when you're running out of toilet paper. You don't wait until you're out of toilet paper and it's 2 a.m. and it's a blizzard and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't believe I don't have any toilet paper. And you may think, but those are just little things. No, these are very important things. See, a lot of times because people don't know how to live, they don't know how to live a basic regular life, they get overwhelmed when they get out here and they're trying to stay clean and they're trying to figure out how to live. What I like about Odyssey House is that you're in an environment that simulates everyday life, everyday stressors, and you are forced to to apply in real time, you're actually given an opportunity. That's the way I look at it. You're given an opportunity to use all that good stuff that you're learning in those groups and apply it in real time. And we simulate uh, the, the same types of stressors that you're going to face out in real, in real life. And when you don't handle the situations appropriately, we have, you get, so people can write an encounter, meaning they can write down what you did inappropriately and then they can come before you and they can present themselves to you and it's monitored um, there's it's mediated where it's done in a, in a very structured environment but people get to confront you and challenge you on what you did inappropriate and so now you're being you're learning okay I didn't do that right but you're not it's not like you're just so in such trouble you made a mistake and now you're in a whole bunch of trouble no you made a mistake sometimes there's consequences and you have to understand people need to learn in real life if you don't do what you need to do or if you do something inappropriate you're going to have some negative consequences so we're teaching them level that's level uh two when you're learning about things level three you have to be responsible for other people so there you call the structure at that point it's the leadership position in real life you're going to have to be responsible for your kids you're going to have to be responsible to your team at work your co-workers you need to be responsible if you're going on vacation you need to be responsible to make sure that you have what you usually do covered, that you've made arrangements, that you put things in place so that the company flows effectively in your absence. You have to learn how to be responsible for other people. You have to be aware of other people. You have to care. An act of addiction, addiction, uh, uh, the core uh, 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 is self-obsession and self-centeredness. So now we have to learn how to care about other people. And in the meantime, these, these simulations are forcing you to also be aware and work through your unaddressed core issues. Because at level two, oh, they should call that the pressure cooker for real. Because at level two, if you don't, if you don't know, learn, because we teach you, you learn how to set boundaries. If you don't work through low self-esteem and people pleasing and set boundaries, you won't be overwhelmed and miserable. And then when you're overwhelmed and miserable, you're going to get challenged by people to say, well, you're not using all those good techniques, coping techniques that you learned in group 
you 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 articulated them very profoundly when you were in group. But when you've been put in the real situation, you did not use them. So we're going to say, hey, we're going to give you another opportunity. And in fact, you're going to stay at level two until you can demonstrate to us that you know how to use those coping skills and apply them in real time. So we're at level two, level three. Level four is a reentry phase, okay, where you learn you're responsible for yourself. Okay, so now you're getting ready to learn about taking care of yourself. So you have to start blending all of this. You have to blend in taking care. So I have to be responsible for my attitudes, actions, and behaviors. I have to acknowledge that I need some help from other people. I have to learn how to be responsible for things. I have to learn how to be responsible for other people. And now I'm having to learn, learn how to be responsible for myself. But it's not like it's, it, it's choppy. You know, you're actually learning how to blend all of the things that you learn at each level and so for some people as they enter into a uh, level four they transition into recovery housing but they still have to come back on site uh, during the day and for eight hours like they're going to a job and give back to the house in a leadership position and actually structure uh, um, or give you know directions to other people and tell them what they need to do but what they have to do is they're actually practicing because a lot of people have children so they're living in the recovery house they have their children so they have to get outside daycare they have to set that up because in real life when you live on your own you're going to go to work, you're going to go to school, you're going to have to have daycare. You're going to have to get up every morning, you have to get those kids ready, you're going to have to get yourself ready, you're going to have to get those kids to daycare, and then you're going to have to be at your job on point when they expect you. So we let you practice here in treatment, right? We let you practice, and if you don't do it, we hold you accountable, okay? What happened? What happened? What didn't go right? What do you need? You need to buy a planner? Let's buy a planner so you can write down. You need to set your alarm clock an hour earlier. Come on. And so, yeah, and then they have to be responsible for their transportation. We help them sometimes. But a lot of times you have to get to where you need to go on your own. You're not going to have the treatment bus picking you up once you're out of treatment, taking you to all your appointments. You're going to have to learn how to be responsible. You have to make your own appointments. When you're in treatment, we'll make your outside appointments. But when you're a level four, when you become a level four and you're in the reentry phase, oh, no, you got to make your own appointments. Yeah, because it, when you leave treatment, you're going to have to do all of that. And so now what they're doing is they're giving people, we give people an opportunity to adjust to life on life terms, the stressors, and we give them practice on perfecting using the coping tools that they've acquired in real time. No, you're not going to just talk very profoundly while you're in treatment. You sound real good. And then when you get put out there in real life, you fumbling and stumbling and ha. Okay, no, we're going to actually slowly transition you back into society and give you time to practice and give you continuous feedback on how you're doing, what are you doing well, what you need to work on, what you need to improve in. And we're going to give you the techniques. We're going to, t we're going to give you opportunities, training simulations, opportunities to perfect it. So um, this is why I like the TC model. It's the chronic care model for chronic problems. And in society, we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to stop trying to address acute uh, uh, a chronic problems with acute care, that's not a good business. I'm telling you, I told you, I have an MBA. So I, I, my primary uh, calling or assignment is to the human service industry. But I be critiquing this industry through my training. I have two business degrees. I be critiquing what we're doing uh, for cost efficiency. Uh, um, and I'm going to end with this. Every year, SAMHSA, these are the people who fund the treatments all over the United States, the, the grants and things of like that, and so on the federal level. So I'm thinking I'm saying that right. But SAMHSA, they do a research project every year on, you know, people, you know, trying to figure out how many people are using drugs and alcohol. Every year they came up with the same statistic. Every year that I've been working in this industry, and I've been in this industry since 2004, every year they say only 10% of the people who need help are coming in contact with the human service industry. So when I, when I think about that, I'm like, what is going on? And I believe one of the issues, now there's a lot of, they have a lot of reasons they say, but I believe one of the issues is because we need to be more focused on providing chronic care models for chronic problems. So once again, thank you for joining us today on the Madness to Miracle show. I'm your radio host, Anisha Freeman. If you need help or do you know, if you know anyone who's struggling with addiction, who need help, they can call Odyssey House 24 hours a day. We can be reached at 810-238-0483. Again, that's 810 238 
888-242-0483. Thank you for joining us on the Madness to Miracles show. This is Anisha Freeman, your host, giving you the keys you need for a wonderful life. I will be back right here next week on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint. Our Voices Radio, determined to make a difference. I will see you next week. Talk to you soon.